one day I got a pamphlet in the mail and it was a picture of a cow being dragged to slaughter. And it just sort of shocked me because I thought, wow, I have no awareness about where my food comes from. I want to be someone who doesn't partake in this horrible thing that happens to animals. But I don't know how to get there because I'm a girl from Georgia and I grew up on, you know, burgers and barbecued ribs and every kind of cheesy sauce and I guess like most Americans actually and I just thought I, I have no idea where to start. I thought I'm not going to say I'm not going to eat meat or cheese or anything like that. And instead I said, what kind of burrito can I have? Like what kind of what kind of pizza could I make that would be really good, you know, that would sort of supplant the animal foods. And that's how I did it. I just crowded out rather than cutting out and I leaned into it and probably over the course of about a year and a half, I went from full on meat eater to being someone who was not only vegan, but an activist. If you told me I was gonna be vegan one day, I'd be like, what, what do I do? And so you just lean into it. You start replacing every once in a while, maybe one day a week, then two days a week. And I think if you're gonna make a lifestyle change, it's best to do it gradually, little bit of a time. I'm a big believer in veganish. I wrote a book called The Book of Veganish because there are so many people, including myself, that are better with progress, not perfection. And so I think that being vegan-ish is awesome. It just gives you space to find your way. There's no black or white, there's no labels, there's no polarization like you're either in or you're out. Maybe that's what I'm gonna be, vegan-ish. Yeah. yeah, that's great. The, the vegan-ish. Other, vegan-ish. The other term is... Yeah. Cause I'm not ready to commit to the I, whole thing. I understand. I'm not ready to commit to the whole thing. I so get how hard it is to change the way you eat or the way you think about food, but I think when you lean into it and you just explore, don't put a timeline on yourself and you just say, I'm going to make this like a sport. I'm going to I'm going to just find good foods and good restaurants and and I'm going to have Thanksgiving dinner, you know, and I'm going to have my turkey and mashed potatoes and all of that stuff. I'm just going to try a plant-based turkey and I'm going to try mashed potatoes with like soy milk and, and earth balanced butter. So I believe that we can have all the things that we love, that we enjoy, and milk is obviously one of them. But think about it. A cow produces milk so that her little baby calf will put on a thousand pounds really quickly and grow into a fat, docile, slow cow, right? Yeah, we don't want to be fat, docile, and slow. I mean, think about this, Ellen. If I called you up and I said, hey, come on over to my house. You know, I had just had a baby or something. I said, you know, I have a little extra breast milk and I decided to make some ice cream with it. So come right. on over for some, for some yeah. ice cream. We would not be friends. <laughs> no. I would not be your friend. I never intended to be a writer or an activist for veganism or plant-based lifestyle, but I became so obsessed with it. There are so few things in life that you can really, really make a difference with. But this, alleviating suffering from animals, like not participating in that, I can do that three times a day. And I can talk about it, and I can write about it, and I can Instagram about it, and that has a huge effect. That's really exciting to me. So I just became an activist. I had no idea that's where my life was going, but I'm so happy it went that way. So getting this award to me feels a little bit like cheating. You guys at Last Chance for Animals are the ones who are the warriors who do the work that I couldn't bear to do. All I do is I eat and I talk about my food. <laughs> so that's that's super easy and I'm, I'm so blessed to get an award for it. I'm just really, really happy that that pamphlet came in the mail and I'm really, really happy that there are organizations like Last Chance that tell the truth about what happens to animals because if I didn't see that, if I didn't know what was going on, I'd still be eating barbecued ribs. Now I'm just eating barbecued tofu.